Hey everybody, this is Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I have a new journal that's in the shop and I wanted to do a flip through to not only document it on my channel, but to share it with you and just to show you how it turned out. It is another lace covered journal, but it's a little bit different. This is one that has some embellishing, but not a tremendous amount. It has some really, really pretty elements but it has a lot of room for you to do your thing. You'll notice on the front that there is a broken watch. This is a tiny little pocket watch. The cover is broken off, but the back is really pretty. It's got this intricate design on the back. I don't believe that it is particularly old. It was just something really cute that I found in some broken jewelry. I used the hemp cord to tie this onto the front and you can see where it has sort of untwirled, if that's a word. And I love the way it looks right now. You can remove this, you can leave it, whatever you want to do. On the outside, there are some very organic, botanical, natural looking charms. There's one of the glass mushroom beads. I love these. <laughs> this has been one of my favorite things to work with. There's a wooden bead and then I don't think this is glass. I think it's probably some type of plastic or, or acrylic or something. And then we have um, another wooden bead and that is also on hemp cord. There are a couple of flowers made from strips of cotton fabric and old lace. The cover itself has a lot of old lace on it. This tie that goes around is also a piece of vintage lace trim. This one, this one is kind of a big cover and I love the way it closes. It's got kind of a tri-fold closure. Let me open this up so you can see all of the lace here. So lots of different layers. There's my birdsong stamp. There is some lace trim over here. Just, you can see all of the different layers. The way that it closes is with this flap coming up over the pages. And you can see the birdsong stamp here. And then when it folds, you can tie it right around this piece of lace here, this little flap area. And you can tie it loosely. There's a lot of room to grow in this journal. Once we get inside, there is a little chain here, like uh, kind of, you see necklaces on these. This is what dog tags hang on. And it has the word charmed. There is an old button. This looks like mother of pearl or something. Really, really pretty. That is sewn to the same thread that's holding the little watch in place. I wanted this journal to be lacy and romantic, but I also wanted it to have a bit of a creepy vibe since we're getting close to fall and Halloween. I wanted the colors to be whites and creams and fall colors. I didn't want it to be overly bright, but I did want it to feel like fall. There are a couple of things in this first pocket here and there is lace inside that pocket, so sometimes it feels a little, little bit slow to put something in the pocket, but it's, it's fine. It works. I love the way this looks. This tag is fun. I just printed one of these little designs that I did probably a year ago with the lady in the hat, and we've got the crow there. So I folded this paper into three pieces and just stitched around the bottom. The rest is still in unattached layers. So when I went around the edges with my Distress ink and a wet brush, it curled the pages. And I love the way that turned out. And then there's a piece of satin. That's, that's actually from an old garment. It looks like satin ribbon, but it's just a strip of satin. And then we have a postcard with an old doll. And both of those things are sitting in this front pocket. I love this paper, Hillary. If you're watching, this is another piece that came from you. I tea stained this and I love the way it muted these colors and made everything fade a little bit. Some of the pages have a piece of fabric that makes a little tab for turning. Most of these pages are not embellished, although pretty much every page is tea stained or vintage. So we have vintage book pages, 
You can see the mortar and pestle images on this page, old music sheets, really pretty paper, and there are just some images throughout, some printed graphics that I have paper clipped in here. This journal does not have any pockets. It does not have a lot of embellishing, although there is a lot of work that's done for you in the tea staining and just putting the journal together with a place for writing, gluing, collaging, whatever you want to do in here. I love the tea staining effect. And there are some images that are a bit on the creepy side. There's a strip of vintage lace on this page, just more old book pages, another little piece of cardstock that has some old mushrooms printed on it. This has got the page that has witch, witchcraft, witch doctor, witchery, witch's broom. So that is just tucked under here. I thought I would let you decide if you want pockets. This is an old typewritten page. Don't you love that crinkly sound? This page shows a large cabinet in a vintage drugstore. More of the music paper, and you can see the handwritten notes there from the student. This page was tea stained. I'm just going to flip through. This is an amazing postcard. Vincent Van Gogh, skull with a burning cigarette. Just lots of really pretty paper in this one. This is a book page that I scanned from a chapter called Incidents and Curiosities, and it has just got some really odd looking pictures there. You can see there are a variety of paper clips used. You can take those out. You don't have to keep them. You can take all of the little pictures out if you want to. What's more scary than a circular saw? And then at the center, on this side of the center page, we have this old uh, looking wallpaper. I don't think this is particularly old, but it has some reproduction of some old labels on here, which I think is just beautiful. And here we have a scan from a very old book showing a gate. I believe it, this is a gate to a castle, and you can see what looks like either someone just walking through the woods or maybe a groundskeeper. There is a lot of room for you to make this your own, a lot of room for you to journal and just turn this into whatever you want it to be. I thought this envelope was really neat. It reminded me of Gollum on Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. Put this back and then here is another beautiful postcard. This is one of my favorite images. She's holding the skull and gazing into the candle. Beautiful. This was made in France. Uh, this reproduction was done in 1975. So there are some pretty things in here. More of the mushrooms. And this is a pretty postcard. It, it looks like a soldier or a knight. He's wearing, it looks like a coat of mail and armor. And he's got this beautiful cape on. Just really lovely. There's a large sword there. This is called Flower of Light. Printed in Germany, copyright 1974. And here is more of this old page. It looks like part of a play. Uh, we have lights up, narrator, and then this is something I printed. That was an image that I scanned. Two children from long ago, probably the late 1800s or the early 1900s, but this is an old, old image. And I just love that. It's got it's got a very beautiful, sweet quality, but it also has a bit of a haunted quality to me. So that is folded up in there. And I love this pattern. 
colors. That is another scanned photograph that I had in my collection. Looks like sisters maybe, just beautiful. So as you can see, this one has a lot of pages. Now this last postcard, this is one I found recently. Uh, the most important beloved figure in any Lebanese family is the grandmother. This is especially true for the families like ours who started making the journey to America from tiny Lebanese villages near nearly a century ago. The grandmother is called Siti. Siti. So I don't think this postcard is particularly old. This is a beautiful, beautiful image. And it's not a creepy image to me, but it is a bit haunting. Just, just the looks of it. That very faded look. I absolutely love this. And let me see if I can put this paper clip back on. I might not use that one again. That one was hard to get on the first time, and I don't want to damage the, the postcard at all. So then in the back, I recently found one of these reproduction historical documents. You can buy these at places like museums. So here is Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe courtesy of the Richard Gimbel Collection of Edgar Allan Poe, Free Library of Philadelphia. It says, this is a reproduction of the original manuscript in Edgar Allan Poe's handwriting. Signature is from his signature on the raven. Picture is taken from Brady's 1862 photograph of Poe. I love that very much. So this is in this journal. I recently found this, oh, maybe a month ago. It's just printed on paper. It looks, I just don't know, it looks like an inversion sort of thing with a photograph. It's pretty. And then here's a Sherlock Holmes page with the adder on it. So again, there's not a lot of embellishing. There's not just a ton of ephemera in here, but what is in here is really special. And there's this flip over part. I do like that this part that flips over will hold a writing instrument and it goes pretty far in there. So this would be a fun journal to just completely fill up and make it however you want it to be. I put the the watch on the front to make you think about slowing down and taking time to journal. There's a little bit of a creepy element, scary element to this front here. And I hope this goes to someone who is going to love this as much as I enjoyed making it. The details are on my website. Thank you so much for looking and I will see you soon. Bye for now.